Hey everyone. Um, so I'm here to share some of what Kai was saying, but most importantly, just to walk you through this journey I've had over during my PhD at MIT. So every time we go online, we're interacting with all these hidden AIs that are making decisions for us. They know what we like, they know who we text, they know what we text them about, and then they keep recommending us content. They also think they know about us, and then they make all these decisions. If you think for a moment, sometimes you're scrolling your Instagram feed and you like it so much, and then you see your friend's Instagram feed and you're like, why are these models even recommending this to you? And then you realize, wow, I hadn't understood how much these AIs know what I like or what I don't like. And then the question is, are they perfect? Do they really know me? Do they hold the same values that I do? I'm a PhD candidate and also a research assistant at the MIT Media Lab, where I focus on social sciences and understanding the effects of AI in the ecosystem. We care about creating a healthier society. And that's why I'm here today to talk to you about different values in these models. And for all of you who raised your hand when you were prompted about ChatGPT to know what's happening behind. A few months ago at the MIT Media Lab, we had an open house where people, researchers, were showing their latest advances. And I ran into this chatbot before ChatGPT that was training and learned in a large language model called GPT-3. And it asked me only a few questions, such as my name, my age, where I grew up, to which I said Chile in South America. It also asked me who I love most in life, who I said my mom, and this couple people. And then with all this, it got fine-tuned to interact with me as if it was me in 50 years from now. So imagine Belen of 80 years talking to me about my life right now. I was surprised when I got to ask this agent who's my favorite singer. Let me show you that in one slide. So basically I asked, hey, at the chat at this moment, who's my favorite singer? It not only predicted correctly that it is Shakira, which is true, it also went down to tell a story to say, we admire her since we're kids, and then it goes and goes talking about my identity as a woman, also as a person from Latin America, and then it says, we also got lucky to meet her once. Isn't that inspiring? Imagine you're a kid and you're talking to a chatbot that's telling you this is what's gonna happen in your life. And you're like all hyped and you're trusting this and then you're telling everyone this is what's gonna happen. And you're so into it that you don't think that there's anything wrong with all these models. At the MIT Center for Constructive Communication, which is my uh, research house, we care about designing tools, methods, and systems to create healthier societies. We think about in the ground, but also think about the online spaces as social media. With this, I wonder, how where are we as to how these models are making decisions? And then, when I came to MIT, I was like, one of the things I care the most about is making of the internet a safer place. And you may wonder, how is all this related to making of the internet a safer place? Well, let me tell you a little bit about the understanding that I've gathered through the last four or five years working at MIT. Um, so the question uh, that I had is how these models work. And it's pretty simple. We as humans are very good at completing each other's sentences or at knowing what the other person was trying to say and so on. So if a group of researchers came together and said, what about we train these models to fill in the blanks or predict the next word? And they came up with this very basic task that for us as humans is super simple, but back in the day for machines was really hard to do. So let me show you this. One basic example that all language models and chatbots are based on is something like this. If I say, this morning I walked my blank at the park, most of you might be thinking, okay, let's say dog, dog, I walk my dog, you weren't thinking about dogs. But there is also a chance that there is a cat, it could be a kid or it could be a reptile, depending on the frequency in the data that these models are trying on, okay? And then when we query one of these models, that evolved today to be those models like ChatGPT, we accurately get the right answer that most of us 
had in our minds, which in this case is dog. So it would be, I walk my dog at the park. Imagine all, all these generative models generating content again and again and again. All these many times, you have many stories about people walking their dogs at the park. There is no issue with that because that's something that happens all the time. But imagine a data set that used to be this size with all the models, all the generated text that's coming out of these models. Now the data set is going to be impressively large. These models are also quite good at generating stories, a whole narrative, so not only one token at the time, but like the, the, the conversation I had earlier with myself in 80 years, they can generate whole stories. So let's look at this. It said, this morning I woke my dog at, and then I prompt the model, and it continues with a whole story talking about how we uh, run around and played fetch and also, uh, then we, I took my dog for a walk around the lake. And then these models go, uh, go and go, and they keep generating all this content, either fictional or real, but it is really impressive to us because like human-like generating language and generating stories around us. Well, let me show you also other ability that these models have based on how they learn language. So if I prompt this model and say, MIT is in Cambridge and Bentley University is in, we would all hope to get the right answer, which is Waltham, which is pretty accurate, right? We all drove here or moved here to come to this talk. If I say king is a prince, as queen is a, most of you are thinking, okay, if this model is accurate, I'm gonna get princess, which actually we do get. Then there are other examples that are a little bit more unsettling that also this model should get accurately, right? So in this scenario we have Steve is a businessman as Jane is a businesswoman. All great so far. We also have Derek is a doctor as Laura is a doctor. All great so far. Except that when I actually prompted this model, this is not the answers that I got. And this happened last week when I was interacting with GPT-3, which is the base model for chat GPT. Instead of that, I got, Steve is a businessman as Jane is a secretary. And Derek is a doctor as Laura is a nurse. The main difference between what we see on the left and on the right is the gender that is associated to that name. And these models are generating tons of content online based on the same values. The values that come either from the data and the representation, the way we talk, the data sets, for example, how, how, how large of a representation of women being secretary we have. This might seem, okay, but this is only one sentence. Let me kind of try to share with you something that I really care about, which is the following example. As a kid, I said, I talked to this chatbot in the first slide or so, and then they inspire me. But imagine you're a kid and you go, hey, chat GPT, what are some tall recommendations for girls and for boys? And this is a model that is out there and people are interacting with it and things are happening. To your surprise, and you're gonna see tons of tweets with this kind of type of screenshots. What we got today in 2023 is that for girls, the recommended toy are dolls, while for boys, it's feeling sad. For many of you, this would be something unacceptable today. And this is one of the largest plot twists right now in large language models. So we're using them all the time without realizing what's really behind them, and if they really hold the values we want for our people. Imagine now people being raised today. Today's kids are the first generation being raised completely online. They go on, on, into the internet, interacting with all these agents, and the agents are passing on to them the values they encode. What about other things they might care about? Environment, they might care about how much consumerism they promote, they might care about use of drugs, they might care about all these things that we don't know, but these models are interacting and making decisions based on that. During my time at MIT, I made it my mission to focus on this aspect of AI, 
when I think about making of the internet a safer place. And these are only the scenarios that I care about, especially for children. As I can get inspired, I can also get skewed and my possibilities can get skewed. If you go online this afternoon, go to Google, put and write down toy for girls, guess what you're gonna get? Dolls. If you write toys for boys, guess what you're gonna get? Legos. Okay, so all these were reinforcing continuously. But, and, these decisions are be, and these decisions that we make, that we accept AIs to make, they perpetuate all these biases that we don't necessarily agree with. Uh, we just look at gender bias, but there is a lot of research also based on racial bias, intersectional biases, uh, like based on names, based on like demographics, and so on, that you might also care about to think. Uh, let me show you now what I'm trying to work at MIT. So in this center, we care a lot about how communities uh, communicate with each other and also the values that every individual holds as opposed to having a universal model that serves everyone. So what I'm doing at MIT and I've been doing and will continue doing in my life is working on community center, interpretable, human in the loop decision making. There is a bunch of keywords here and that may be confusing, but basically we want to center ourselves in the community values as opposed of like who owns the platform and what are the values that the holder of the platform is allowing and offering to all of us. So basically, what do I care about? What my community cares about? We want it to be interpretable because we don't know how these machines necessarily are making decisions. So this is something we really care about. When we go to the internet, I want to know why they're recommending me this. Why am I getting dolls that are not legals? What can I do uh, as a human? What can I do as a family member? What can I do for the next generations for them to not be under these unfair biases? And then human in the loop as a way to include control to that. So instead of looking at the whole ecosystem of people interacting online with universal models, so right now we have only one chat GPT that you can prompt to pretend to be different people and so on, but down the road, you'll see in research that the issues are the same. Instead of doing that, my thesis and work in the future continues focusing on what are the things that each of us care about? What are the things that I care to promote models? What are the things that I care to challenge models? And with this, I want to leave an invitation to all of you to be like, these are the things that I care for my family. Are the AIs we are interacting with validating them or they are challenging them? Right now, people are giving our kids all these different uh, tools to interact with. And I'm not saying these are the values children should hold, but more so we should be aware of what's happening because otherwise one single universal model is going to govern the values that people grew up with. Thank you so much.